Let us leave these impressive landscapes and move on towards Dawn, the section dealing with Osta de Lahi's childhood and youth. The genealogy of Osta de Lahi has been traced back to the 14th century. Existing documents give an indication of the great respect all his ancestors inspired as a result of their courage and the nobility of their disposition. Osta de Lahi's father, Hajanimat, a landowner and a dignitary in his region, was especially well known as a learned man, a great mystic and a poet. Osta de Lahi was born on September the 11th, 1895, in Jehunabad, a Kurdish village in western Iran. Under the guidance of his father, at the age of nine, he began a cycle of ascetic practices that lasted for 12 years. Three central showcases contain objects that are reminiscent of the atmosphere prevalent in his childhood. Here, a few traditional dervish tools. The word dervish, in its true sense, means one who has triumphed over his desires. The axe was originally used as a weapon, but in the hands of a dervish, it eventually became a symbol of the inner struggle against the imperious self. The hollow inside the begging bowl symbolizes the inner purification and the abandonment of all selfishness necessary to become receptive to the divine will. Some finely engraved objects of great value. Another traditional dervish accessory, the cap, is covered by some fine material embroidered by the hands of the dervish who wore it. Old-time dervishes were truly detached from the material world. They kept their hands busy all the time so that their mind would not wander. They set themselves a program of needlework or some other handicraft. Their hands did the needlework and the mind was focused on the divine. On this wall, images from the native village and the family house of Ostadilai. My father used to say to me, it is as if I have raised you in a fine garden. If you look beyond the garden walls, you will see nothing but baseness and impurity. When I entered society, I couldn't imagine that it was possible for people to lie or cheat or do anything immoral. On account of this, I suffered a great deal. central showcase of the section Dawn, there are some indications of the teachings of Stadila he received from his father. The large manuscript dictated by his father, Hajinimat, is in Ostadila his own hand. A long poem of about 15,000 verses entitled The Book of the Kings of Truth. It was published for the first time in 1966 by the Institute of Franco-Iranian Studies headed by the late Professor Henry Corbin. Another manuscript contains 2,000 verses composed by Ostad Elahi in his youth. In it, there are expressions of mystic experiences, intimate conversations with the Divine Beloved, and words of guidance. The small notebook is a collection of prayers in the form of 1,500 verses written by Hajanimat. As a child, every Thursday night, Osta de Lahi would recite all these prayers before going to sleep. The practice of the art of Persian calligraphy was a source of pleasure to Osta de Lahi. Despite its complex technique, 
this sophisticated practice requires only a few simple tools. In the third showcase, a few objects belonging to Ostad Ilahi. Among them, a cane with a finely engraved silver handle. A jasper necklace that belonged to his mother. A special item, a riding whip, reminds us that Ostad Ilahi was an excellent horseman. The first photographs of Ostad Ilahi were taken when he was 26 years old. The photograph in which I have long hair and wear a turban goes back to the time when I had just turned 26. How marvelous it was. I was in an angelic world and lived in a state of constant asceticism, eating only one meal a day just after sunset. Even so, I had a fresh and rosy complexion and felt fit and well all the time. In accordance with the mystic tradition of the times, his hair had not been cut since the age of six. Yet at the age of 34, Ostad Ilahi decided to cut his long hair, thereby symbolizing the end of an era and the beginning of a new spiritual cycle. In 1920, shortly after his marriage and the birth of his first son, the passing of his father marked the end of the period he later called the happiest years of my life. We are now coming to the end of the section Dawn.